So now we'll be looking at swords and what are swords. A sword represents the irrational root of an integer. So what is an irrational number? An irrational number just means a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction of two whole numbers. A number that cannot be expressed as a over b where a and b are integers. For example, the square root of two cannot be expressed in the form of the fraction of two integers, same with the square root of three and the square root of three over two. Now, another interesting example to consider is the value of pi. We know that the value of pi is 3.142 then ranging to infinity. But most times you see the value of pi given as 22 over 7. Does this mean that pi is an irrational number? No. This is just an approximation to make calculation easier. In reality, the value of pi cannot be written as a fraction of two integers. So that is what it means for number to be irrational. So how do we simplify sort? The goal is to represent the number under the square root as two factors in which one is a perfect square. And what do I mean by that? What is a perfect square? A perfect square is a number in which you can express it as a product of two equal numbers. For example, 9 can be expressed as the product of two equal whole numbers or two equal integers. 9 can be expressed as a product of 3 times 3, so 9 is a perfect square. Same with 4. 4 can be expressed as 2 by 2, which makes it a perfect square. Same with 16 that can be expressed as 4 times 4. So as you can see, 9, 4, and 16 are all perfect square. But for example, 17 is not a perfect square because you can't express this as the product of 2 integers that are the same. So when we are trying to simplify a sort, what do we do? We try to write the number under the square root sign as the product of two factors in which one is the perfect square. So now in this example, you see that the square root of 45 can be written as the product of what? 9 times 5. 9 times 5 give me 45. But now we know that 9 is a perfect square. So this can be simplified as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And since it's a perfect square, we know that the square root of 9 will be an integer, which is equal to what? 3. So 3 times 5 times the square root of 5. And that equals to what? 3 root 5. So this is how we simplify so We try to write the number in between the square root as a product of two factors, in which one is a perfect square. So how do we add and subtract swords? You can only add two swords if they are like swords. And what does it mean for swords to be like? Like sword means that they have the same number under the square root sign. It's just the same thing as collecting like times. Like in this example, you can see that there's a square root of 2a and there's a square root of 2a. Imagine you have a algebraic expression 2a plus 5a. I are trying to find the sum. Since they have same terms here, a and a, you can just add the coefficients and you have 3 plus 5 which gives me 8a. The same thing applies here. Since they have the same term, square root of 2 and square root of 2, I can add the two of them by just adding the coefficient. So 3 plus 5 give me 8. So the sum of these two values is giving what? 8 root 2. So now let's move on to the second example. And in this second example, we see that they are not like swords because what is underneath the square root sign are not the same. But we can write out what is underneath we can simplify this sort so that what is under it can be the same. And how do we do that? Remember that to simplify sort, we write the number under the square root sign as a product of two numbers in which one of them is a perfect square. So in this case now, we have two square root of 27 can be written as a product of 9 times 3. 9 is a perfect square. Then plus 75 can be written as a product of 25 times 3. And we know 25 is a perfect square. And can be written as the product of 4 and 3 and we know that 4 is a perfect square so the square root of 9 is 3 so we can bring that out so we are left with 2 times 3 then what is left under the square root now is 3 square root of 25 is 5 so we can bring that outside the square root and we are left with 3 then minus 5 times and the square root of 4 is 2 we can bring that out and we are left with 3 so now we are left with 6 root 3 
plus 5 root 3 minus 10 root 3. So now we have like source because they all have square root 3, square root 3, and root 3. So now we can just deal with the questions alone. So we have 6 plus 5, which give me 11, then minus 10, which give me 1. So I'm left with what? 1 root 3. Or you can just write this out as root 3. So that is what you need to know with regards to addition and subtraction of sorts. How about multiplication of sorts? Now, to multiply sorts, you multiply the whole number with the whole number and sort with sort. What do I mean by that? For example, we want to multiply the product of root 27 and root 50. First, we start out by simplifying. You can write 27 as the product of 9 times 3 to simplify it. And similarly, we can write 50 as the product of 25 times 2. So now we know that the square root of 9 is 3, so we can bring 3 out and we're left with root 3. Then times the square root of 25 is 5, we can bring that out and we're left with root 2. So what do we do when we multiply? We multiply the whole number with the whole number. So we multiply the whole number with the whole number. And we multiply sword with sword and multiply sword with sword. So what does that give us? So you have 3 times 5, you have 15. And you have root 3 times root 2. So what does this give you now? You have 15 times square root of, you can combine the root sign together. So I, I'm left with what? 15 root 6. So this times this, you give me what? 15 root 6. So now let's solve the second example. And in this example now, we are told that to simplify square root of 12 times 3 root 60 times 45. So how do we go about it? First, we try to simplify. 12 can be written as a product of 4 and 3. 60 can be written as a product of 4 and 15. And 45 can be written as a product of 9 and 5. So what does this give us? So square root of 4 is 2. We can bring that out to have 2 root 3 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So we can multiply that by 2. And we're left with root 15. Then times square root of 9 is 3. So we can bring that out 3 and left with root 5. So we are left with 2 root 3 multiplied by 6 root 15 multiplied by 3 root 5. And how do we deal with this? So as you know, we multiply the whole number with the whole number and with the whole number. So what that gives us? That gives us 2 times 6 times 3 and we multiply the swords together. So we multiply the sword by the sword and by the sword. So this will give us the square root now. Then the swords are 3 times 15 times 5. So 2 times 6 times 3 gives us 36. So we have 36 times the square root of... I know that 3 times 5 gives us what? 15. I know that times 15. So this is pretty straightforward. Now we have the square root of 15 times 15. So we know that the square root of 15 times 15 will be equal to 15. Because 15 times 15 will give us 2 to 5, which is a perfect square. Just like having 9, which is the square root of 3 times 3. So this simplifies to what? 36 times 15. And when you multiply this together, you get 540. So when you simplify this sort, this is what you get, 540. So now, how about the division of sort? Now, to divide sort, we introduce the concept of rationalization. So to rationalize a sort, you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by its denominator. So what do I mean by this? Now, I want to simplify 7 over root 18. So to simplify this, what do I do? I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. The denominator here is root 18, so I multiply the numerator by root 18, and I multiply the denominator by root 18. Now, as you can see, root 18 divided by root 18 is equal to 1. So multiply this by 1, you see the same thing. But for simplification purpose, that is why we are doing it this way. So I have 7 times root 18. So I have 7 root 18 over and now i have root 18 times root 18 so now you know that when you have root 18 times root 18 the answer is going to be 18 
because it's just the same thing as saying square root of so that will just be it's just similar to saying let me write here the square root of three times the square root of three we know that that will be equal to three so if you have this product of the square root of two equal numbers it will be equal to square of one of those numbers so in this case it's going to be equal to 18 so we have 7 root 18 over 18 so that is how we rationalize sort and divide sort so now how do we expand sort or multiply sort or expand so the way we expand is just similar to the normal expansion that you're familiar with for example if you have a plus b multiplied by c plus d how do you do it you take this term and you multiply it by this term to give you this term so you have ac then you take this term and you multiply it by this term to get ad then you take this term and you multiply it by this term to get bc and you take this term and you multiply it by this term to get bv so the same thing applies here so as an example let's try to expand this so how do we go about this we take this term and multiply by this term so we have in brackets 3 root 5 times root 5 then plus we take this term and multiply by this term 3 root 5 times 3 then plus we take this term now and multiply by this 2 times root 5 then plus we now multiply these two terms together 2 times 3 and what would that give us this gives us now as we can see we have 3 times square root of 5 times square root of 5 now as we have explained earlier on the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is equal to 5 so this should be reduced to what 3 times 5 then plus to multiply so we multiply the whole number by, by the whole number so we have 3 times 3 left with 9 then times root 5 then plus the whole number here is 1 2 times 1 2 so you have 2 times root 5 then you have 2 times 3 which gives me 6 so we can expand we have 3 times 5 so we have 15 plus 9 root 5 plus 2 root 5 plus 6 so now we can collect like times together and we know that root 5 9 root 5 plus 2 root 5 put up with 5 so we can add the, the coefficient together 9 plus 2 is 11 so it give me this will give me 11 root 5 then and i have 15 plus 6 which will give me 21 so when you expand that it will be reduced to this so 11 root 5 plus 21 so now let's move on to the concept of conjugate sort so if a two term expression contains at least one sub term we call it a binomial sort so any sort you see in which one of the term contains a sort term and a sort term is a term that contains the square root of an irrational number so we see that in this case now this is referred to as a binomial sort and now to find the conjugate of a binomial sort all we need to do is just to change the sign in between the two terms of the binomial sort to the opposite sign so in the, in this case now you have this binomial sort square root of a plus b and square root of a minus b are conjugate sort as you can see only the signs are changed so for example now if you have square root of 3 plus let's say 3 what will be the conjugate of this sort all you need to do is just to change the sign so you have what square root of Tiggy minus tiggy. Let's assume you have now 4 plus 2 root 3. So what will be the conjugate? The conjugate will just be for you to change the sign in between. So that will be 4 minus 2 root 3. And let's assume you have now root 3 minus 5 root 2. What will be the conjugate? The conjugate will just be for you to change the sign in between. So you have root 3 plus 5 root 2. So this is pretty much what conjugate of a sort of a binomial sort the first two so there's something i would like us to quickly examine and that is how to multiply a sort by its conjugate so now if you have a sort and you try to multiply it by its conjugate it results in difference of two squares 
and I want us to quickly examine the difference of two squares. That's what I'm talking about this now. So for example, given this sort now, 3 root 5 plus 2, you can easily write out the conjugate. You know that the conjugate will be what? 3 root 5 minus 2. So let's assume we want to multiply these two sorts together. We want to multiply. So first, I'm going to try to solve this directly. Then I will now explain the concept of difference of two square. So let me divide both. So now you can multiply with the way I've explained. So you take this term and multiply by this term. So you multiply the whole number part. So you have three times three, you have nine, and you have root five times root five, which is five. Then you go to the next term. So you have this times this three root five times minus two. So minus two times three will give me what? That will be minus six root five. Then here, and I have plus this times this. So two times three will give me six. So I'm ready to what? Six root five. Then I'm now left with two times minus two, which will give me what? Minus four. So if I expand nine times five, will give me what? 45. Then minus times plus is minus minus six root five plus 6 root 5 minus 4 and if you see this term cancels this term so i'm left with 45 minus 4 which is equals to 41. so now applying the concept of difference of two square we know that if we have two terms a plus b and its conjugate which will be a minus b that this instead of expanding through the, through the long way this is equivalent to seeing a squared minus b squared so if you have the same terms and only that the sign in between them is different is equivalent to just saying the first term squared minus the second term squared so let's apply to this example where you have 3 root 5 plus 2 times 3 root 5 minus 2 so in this case now it's just going to be the first term squared which is 3 root 5 squared then minus the second term which is 2 2 squared so what would this be 3 3 3 root 5 squared and next time you so this is what 3 squared is what 9 and 5 squared is what 5 then minus 2 squared is what 4 what is 9 times 5 you have 45 minus 4 and that is equals to 41 so when you have to multiply a sort by conjugate you don't need to, to go through the series of expanding. You can always use the difference of two square to quickly simplify it. So now we're going to try to talk about rationalization of binomial sorts now. So for example, when how does this idea of conjugate sort come into play? It is used when trying to rationalize a binomial denominator. And what do I mean by binomial denominator? It means in the denominator of this sort you have a binomial term a binomial sort term so now so what do you do when we're talking about rationalizing a sort we say that you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator but in the case of a binomial denominator what you have to do now is you have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator and when you do this the denominator can be easily solved using difference of two squared well, let me try to illustrate this with a simple example. So in this example now, you have 6 over 2 root 2 minus 1. So now, as you can imagine or see, you can see that this denominator here is a binomial sort. And why is that? Because one of the terms is a sort. So now, what is the conjugate of this sort? We can see that the conjugate of this sort is going to be what? 2 root 2 plus one so to simplify it what do we do we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator so that will give me what six over two root two minus one then times two root two plus one over two root two plus one so now that you have that what do i have to do now we just have to expand so now we have 6 into bracket 2 root 2 plus 1 over so now we now have the product of two conjugate sorts 
and as i've explained before this can be easily solved using defense of two square so this reduces to when you expand this you have six times two now you have 12 root 2 plus 6 times 1, you have 6. And using difference of 2 squared, I can just take this term, which is what 2 root 2 squared. Then the second term is what minus 1 squared. And what does that reduce to? I'm left with 12 root 2 plus 6 over. Then 2 squared is 4. Then the square root of 2 squared is 2 times 2 then minus 1. And that will be equal to what? 12 root 2 plus 6 over 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1. And finally, that reduces to 12 root 2 plus 6 over 7. So this is the way you rationalize a sort using that has a binomial sort in its denominator. And finally, we are going to look at a second example. So in this example, we are told to simplify this. So what do we have to do as we know now? We have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So what is the conjugate of the denominator? So we know that the conjugate of square root of 2 plus root 3 to be what? To be what? Square root of 2 minus root 3. So what do we have to do? We just have to multiply the numerator and denominator by this. So we proceed as follows. So we have... 2 root 2 minus root 3 over root 2 plus root 3. So I multiply the numerator over root 3, then I multiply the numerator. And as I've explained before, multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing does not have any effect since they will easily cancel out 1, but they help us to simplify. So now, what do we have to do? We have to expand. So to expand this, we have talked about expansion of sort. We multiply this term by this term. So I have 2 root 2 times root 2, then plus, I multiply this term by this term. So I have 2 root 2 times minus root 3, then plus, I multiply this term by this term, which is minus root 3 times root 2. And finally, I multiply these two terms together, which is what? Minus root 3 times minus root 3. Then over. The denominator is quite easy because now I have the product of two conjugate terms. So I know how to deal with this. So this just be the first term squared minus the second term squared. So now what does this reduce to? So this reduces to 2 root 2 times root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 2 times 2 will give me 4. So 4 plus. Oh, let's wait. So we have 2 root 3 times minus root 3. So root 2 times root 3 will give me root 6. Then there's a minus sign there. So I'm left with minus 2 root 6. If I'm not mistaken. Then I have minus. Minus root 3 times root 2 will give me minus root 6. Then I have minus root 3 times minus root 3. That would be, you know that root 3 times root 3 will give me 3. I know that minus times minus is plus. So this will give me plus 3. And we know that root 2 squared is 2. And root 3 squared is 3. So we call it like times 4 plus 3 is 7. And minus 2 root 6 minus root 6 minus so minus 2 root 6 minus root 6. You can see that quotient is minus 1. The quotient is minus 1. That will give me minus 3 root 6. Then over minus 1. So now I can multiply both the numerator and denominator by minus 1 to take care of this minus 1 that is here. So, I have, so I'm, now, I'm now left with minus 7 plus 3 root 6. Or I can write it as 3 root 6 minus 7. So what option corresponds to this? And that is B. So the answer to this question is B. So this pretty much gives you an idea of the kind of question you will expect in JAM with regards to solve. So now we're going to try to look at some additional past questions that try to cover everything that we have discussed in this section.